So recently, there's been a lot of visualization-based AI platforms coming out this year. And especially within the architecture space, there's been so many new tools coming out. Um, it's hard to keep track of all of these new platforms that are arising. But I noticed out of all of these platforms, there's a top few of them that are the best and leading the industry at the moment. And I've mentioned them before in a few videos, but this is a guide specifically on Render AI. Now, Render came out specifically for architecture, which is quite rare when some of these visualization based AI come out. So we're going to be going over all of the features in render, seeing how it holds up. And hopefully this video acts as a guide so you can watch through it and then decide if it's worth using. And we'll do a little bit of a review at the end. So we'll open up render. We'll just quickly go over the website when you open it up. Uh, they have the uh, example video, you can go down and it shows you all of the features they have. Now there are quite a few features. Uh, a lot of these are common in a lot of the visual based AI programs, but they've tailored it all onto this one platform, which is specifically for architecture, which I find quite interesting. A lot of good examples and also something that other platforms don't really do is these guys have their own mini tutorials and videos. So if you ever get stuck, you can just watch one of these. You can also book demos and one-on-one -on -one sessions. So once you've signed up, this is what you see when you sign in. So we'll go over quickly the tabs here. You've got community where you can see everyone's community created posts video tutorials, which I was talking about earlier. You can chat with the AI if you need assistance. Then you have this main creates tab. So first of all, we have text to render, which is your basic prompting render. And you can use this for free. You don't need to sign up for this. You can go ahead and choose the style that you want. So let's say we want a painting, adjust the style strength. I mean, most of this stuff, if you're watching this video, you're probably pretty familiar with AI tools and have used other AI platforms in the past. So the way you set out prompts is pretty similar to most other AI programs. You know, you, you go your subjects with the main description directly after. In this case, an architectural apartment building using timber architecture. Then following that, just keywords, residential building, pavilion, community space, contemporary, and you go ahead and generate. So now we're going to use elevation to render. I've gone ahead and taken this elevation from the internet. It's a very basic single elevation. I'm interested to see how this works out. So you can change the image strength. We've gone ahead with some keywords here. Again, a timber frame contemporary home, listed some materials, some architectural styles, creativity, and we've also got an optional ad reference, which we'll try out afterwards. So we'll do one without a reference and then one with a reference. So go ahead and generate. So here are our, are our four results. I'll say I'm pretty impressed with these results. It's very much stuck to what the input image was. And what I like about this is you can compare the original inputs to the output. Now, obviously it's picked up the shadow as a different material, but you know, if you're using your own elevation, you can very easily just change that shadow off and it applies its own realistic lighting. See, so it's stuck within the parameters and the boundaries. Um, it's interpreted this sloped roof as a flat surface, but I'm sure you can easily adjust that um, with the input image. You know, what I would do is I would just change the texture of this to either a darker material or insert a gradient from dark to light to show that it's sloped. I'm sure the AI will pick it up. You can see it's got reflections. It's even done the window frames as proper window frames. We can also fix up the elevation by using quick fix. So we'll go through that now. So we get one of our existing elevations and we're going to fix up the roof. So we simply select the roof. We'll put in the prompt. We'll go to shingles roof. You can adjust the strength of the color or the shapes. And by generating, it now creates a new variation on the roof, which fixes up our perspective issue as well. And we can do the same thing for each part of the building. So say we want a concrete wall with a roof in the back. Go ahead and generate, and then it will fix up that part of the building. So now we're going to do a little time lapse of going through and fixing up all of the elements within the image. And so that's how you can enhance your image by using quick fix. So now we'll just try this exact same thing again. We'll add in a image reference. So we've got this timber framed house here with these big glass area. So we'll just quickly see if this has any influence on our final output image. Wow. So we'll go through these. You can see the style reference actually does have a lot of influence over this. It's kind of turned it into a perspective style elevation, which is what you'd expect. I'm quite impressed that it's kept the perspective behind the windows, but you can definitely see there's a lot of uh, influence from the import image. So I'd say that's a pretty useful tool, elevation to render. Now we're gonna go over to sketch to render. 
Sketch to Render is one of the most common programs that a lot of people use within these AI platforms. So we're going to test and see how this holds up. We're going to be using this sketch here, which is a sketch view uh, taken from Rhino. We'll go ahead and put this in. I'm going to take out the timber frames and I'm going to go steel frames. Take out timber architecture. Let's keep it modern, concrete, concrete cladding. I'll just add steel architecture in again. I'll go Alpine. Alpine, coastal, uh, I don't want to influence it too much. We'll stick with um, realistic. We won't go through every single one, but you can see there's a lot of options. Create four. We'll add in some negative prompts or things that we don't want. So what don't we want in this? I'll just go timber framing. We don't want timber framing. We'll keep references off for now and we'll see what our result is for this. And so we'll go ahead and we'll click generate. So I've gone ahead and changed the prompt a few times and then ran a few more. So we'll go through from the beginning. I'd say very good result. It is stuck well within the parameters of the sketch image. It hasn't varied too much. You know, we do have a couple of random artifacts in the back, but there's a tool you can use to easily take that out. I think you can even do it right now. You can go edit render, remove objects. So we'll go ahead and analyze the image and we're able to just select the artifact and then remove it. So there's a range of options. You can use magic wands, brush, lasso. We've used the magic wand because it's analyzed every object in this. So you can see if we wanted to remove the mountains, you can. We want to remove the trees. It's analyzed every aspect of the image, but we just want to remove this chimney. So we'll go done and then it will remove that from the image. So there we go. It's removed the object very cleanly. It's even continued the cloud in the background. So that's how easy it is to remove objects. So we'll just continue looking through the results. This I changed it to a coastal setting and made it a sunrise or midday kind of render. Clean skies, a golden hour, morning, which it stuck to the parameters very well again. Some of them you need to do a bit of variations. This one's very good. Even the uh, vegetation is similar to what the input prompt is. It's kept the coastal type vegetation. You know, it's not using arctic or desert trees within the coastal environment. This one looks great. So all the results are very good. And then for this, I used a snowy winter time, night time. And each result has stuck well within the, the parameters. And even the ground around it, you're not getting any weird or warping or anything like that. All the perspective is staying pretty good. So I'd say that sketch to render is a pretty good tool. I mean, if you zoom in, all the way in like this i'd say it's still pretty coherent you know, usually on the ai programs if you zoom all the way in that's where you'll start to see things breaking down but this mostly is uh holds up pretty good so now we're going to go to 3d base to render so i'm going to use this zaha hadid aquatic center model that we've done previously i'm going to use this for 3d base to render and we'll see how this holds up so I've tried three different inputs for 3D base to render because I've had varied results. The first one was this Zaha Hadid building. Now, one problem is that there's the input image was a PNG, so there's no background and no perspective. So it hasn't picked up the perspective of it because there's no context or background, but the result is very good. Next one I imported was this more basic kind of looking obscure pre-rendered image which it has interpreted pretty well. Uh, it's very conceptual, a little bit of artifacting. And it's interpreted the uh, perspective differently here, which is interesting. But the one I had the most success with was this one. The input image was a 3D screenshot from Archicad and it's picked it up very well. And it's um, kept well within the parameters. It's even added glass structure and detailing and I'm pretty impressed with how it's picked up on this one. So if you're going to be using 3D base to render you definitely want to make sure that you have a lot of detail within it uh, before you input it. So I think the result from this is really good actually. I would actually use this almost. Um, obviously within the inside you go ahead and use the editing tools. We're not going to do that right now but 
You can probably edit render, select the interior and change it up until you get something that matches what you want. So 3D base to render is a really great tool, I would say. Then we have image to render. So I'm going to go ahead and use this Unreal Engine render, which I've done previously. So we can change the context of our input render. So our input one was kind of on this alpine coastal kind of look. So there's a lot of different styles you can choose from. You've even got Lego. But we'll just go ahead and change this to say rainy. Confirm. You also go ahead and add on optional add-ons, but we'll just simply change this from this into a rainy setting. All right, I've gone ahead and made a few variations. The first one was rainy. I'm actually very impressed on how this ended up. Um, it stayed true to the original input materials. It's even kept the plants, but changed them and kept the f-stop and bokeh. You can see in the original image, the plants, the front are blurred with the bokeh and still maintain that within the new um, render. Even those mountains is rendered very well. I think this has to be one of the best environment changes I've seen within an AI platform before because it hasn't added any artifacts and stayed true to all the input materials. So there's a few variations there using the rainy. I've gone with a sunset one. This one is a little bit more uh, less realistic, I'll be honest. The sunset in this context is not as great, but I'm really impressed with this rainy winter one. There's also a snowy one, which again, pretty good. It's kept in line with all of the existing input. It's added that frosty snow onto those plants, which is pretty impressive. I uh, definitely use this tool on a real architectural rendering. If you wanted to change the daytime or the weather, because a lot of these architectural rendering firms charge you more to produce multiple renders of the same time of day. So if, if they produce just one at a daytime, you could easily just use render and then change it to rainy, change it to nighttime and do all of that. Now we're going to take a look at the chat tab. This is pretty much like a built-in chat GPT. So it uses all the tools and processes that render come with. So if you want to say add people to an image, you can either upload an image or select one of your existing ones. So say I'll just choose one of these ones, this rainy image, upload that. And you can just request anything you want. Say you want to add people, add some visual effects, change something within the image. You can do that as well. So go ahead and add some people into this image. So you can see it's added some people in on the bottom there. So this acts as like an AI companion for uh, the whole process. All right, so now we'll take a look at 4K upscale. I've put this input image in. It's a very low quality image of an office interior, but I've put it into the 4K upscale and generated, and this is the result. It salvages the image a lot and makes it usable again from such a low quality input image. So I'd say the 4K upscale tool is uh, very useful. And then finally, we will look at virtual staging. So I've gone ahead and inputted our 4K upscaled image. The prompt I used was just a modern apartment building with homely interior. And I've added a bunch of keywords that come preset. So if you want to do industrial building or residential living room, kitchen, dining, then it's all here available. There's a simple prompt, you just click it and it adds it in. And you've even got designer styles, weather, lighting types. Uh, so a lot of options there for preset prompts if you want to use that. So here are some of the results from the low quality input image. And the result turned out actually pretty good. I'm quite surprised with virtual staging, how it's able to analyze the room and then correctly input the furniture according to the prompt and keeping the correct perspective. And this one was with a different input image. You can see the input was rather low quality, but it's created a quite defined output image. So if you have a direct screenshot from say Archicad or Revit uh, of a 3D space that you've designed and you want to go through some interior iterations, I'd say that virtual staging is definitely a very useful tool. And so the final tool is image to video. I tried it with one of our previous renders by adding some people. You just put in uh, your previous creation or an existing image that you want. So I'll go ahead and try this rainy render that we made previously. And you can add in preset prompts again. So we'll just go wide shot. And maybe we'll just type in people and rainy. And then we'll go generate. 
So while that's generating, we'll look at one of the previous ones I made. This was with the snowy arctic version. So I'd say the result was pretty good. Uh, some of these things start to detach, but overall for where image to video is at at the moment, I'd say uh, this would be somewhat usable if you just fixed a couple of these small things, but overall a pretty good result. Again, this one turned out pretty good. Just some minor issues there, but uh, obviously that's going to be an issue with my rendering, which you can easily fix. But everything else, you can see it zooms in with the trees and the leaves. So the result here, I would say, is very usable. So that concludes the guide to Render AI. Now I'd say that was a pretty useful AI tool. Um, I can see how that would actually be used within the workplace. Now, it's nothing revolutionary. It's not gonna design your building for you. It's not gonna make all AI visualizers redundant. It's still one of these recent AI tools that we've seen coming out. I think it will shine for a good year or so. And it is quite similar to other programs like Vizoid, Midjourney, uh, that's all I can think of off the top of my head. But in terms of architectural rendering, I think this is a great and powerful tool if you want to use it to modify existing renders and images. Say you go to an architecture firm, you pay $10,000 for them to render two images, but then you want to see what your building looks like at nighttime. I would definitely use Render to change the time of day in that image. Say you want to change the cladding on your image and you don't want to send it back to the rendering firm to pay another $5,000. I would definitely just use Render for that. In terms of the sketch to render, I would say it's pretty good. Uh, not quite at the point where it'd be able to completely replace an industry visualizer, but if it's like a university project or you're just uh, shooting off ideas, I think it's a very good tool for that. So overall, I would recommend using this program. Uh, that's my honest review on it. Obviously, some of the tools within it are a little bit hit or miss. You get a bit of weird artifacting going on. And in some images, it doesn't completely render what you want, but you know, that's what you get with the nature of these AI tools. So I would recommend this. And that's my honest review on Render AI. If you are considering purchasing it, or wanted to see how you use it first, what all of the features are, and get an honest review and opinion on it, well, I hope that helps you. And um, we'll be looking at more AI tools and AI programs within this industry in the future. So thank you for watching.